Well, hello there. It's Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and we welcoming you to day six of Mermaid Week. We're going to do a little no line watercoloring. And this is the entire series that I've done so far this week. It's been a lot of fun to bring you so many mermaids because there are so many mermaid stamps out there this year. I'm going to use my Daniel Smith watercolors. And I have a palette off to the side, but I didn't think it was going to be really helpful to show it to you necessarily in the video. I'm going to do some mixing of color on the paper because it's really hard to explain the mixing of colors. Here I was trying to warm up the color. It was the buff titanium and gold that I had used made too yellow of a color, so then I added some pink and wiped that off. Then I added a little burnt umber and wiped some of that off. And that is kind of how I do my skin. I know there are people who say use this percentage of that and that percentage of the other. I don't find that that tends to work for me really well. I just start playing around with it and dab off like the highlights, I try to lighten some areas and then go back in and darken some and then just let it dry for a while to see what it looks like once it's dry because everything looks different after it dries. Thalo Yellow Green is a really bright, 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 light green color and I wanted to see how this was going to work and all of this in addition on top of this texture because the stamp texture and this is stamped in a Ranger Archival ink, by the way. All the supplies are listed in the doobly-doo down below. But um, I wasn't sure whether this texture was going to get completely hidden by the paint or not. But what I found was between the paper texture, and this is a Canson rough watercolor paper, between the texture of the paper and the texture of the ink, it just did a really beautiful job on this fin. The fin is probably my favorite part of this entire card. In how it came out. I decided I wanted to try to make that outside little floofy edge look like it was dark green and it started bleeding into the lighter green and that was okay. I wasn't really too worried about it and then by the time I got down to this section toward the bottom the light green had dried up enough that I didn't get the bleeding but I liked the difference between it all. I just think it came out so beautiful and watercolory there's just a little piece inside of me now that wants to start painting more of the no line type of, of mermaids, but not using a stamp. I just want to see what I can do using the paints and that sort of thing. So who knows what you'll see on my Instagram soon. I might start doing a couple of mermaid pictures just for fun, inspired by all the stamping. For her hair, I wanted it to be a green but I wanted it to kind of match her tail a little bit. So I'm using the same shades and just adding some darkness to the bottom. I wanted to add a lot more later, a lot more detail because I could really see a lot of curly stuff going on in her hair that I wanted to exploit, but I wanted it to dry first. So that base layer is gonna sit there and dry while I work on the bathtub. And it, this also made me want a bathtub that looks like the ocean. Isn't that cute that it's got little waves on the bottom of it? So I started using my Prussian blue to paint the, uh, the water and I wanted to leave a little bit of white in between the waves and the sky. So I'm kind of leaving a not exactly perfect, you know, I don't, didn't want it to be exact the, the same width all the way around, but just kind of some, some white distance between the two. So I'll have a little pop. It is a little challenging to get a really straight line with watercolor on this paper. I'll, I'll admit that for sure. I did have a little bit of a challenge trying to get that to happen, but it's also because I was painting inside the Misty, which you might be wondering, why is she still got this inside the Misty? I did stamp it using that Ranger Archival ink in the Misty, but I wanted to be able to do something later on with it, so I didn't want to move it. Even though you should be able to just replace something back into the Misty, I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't have any oopses after I got it all done. And you'll see how that plays out in the very end of this video. So since all this paint was still wet, I thought I'd take advantage of having a lot more of that phthalo green yellow shade on my palette and use up some of it by dropping it into that blue water to give it some two-tone. And then I got out the manganese blue to do the sky, which is the top portion of the bathtub. 
And this is one of those colors that gives you a lot of granulation. So it, that's just the nature of the color. And the granulation is the texture. Part of it will be the texture from the paper because this is the textured rough paper, but part of it is also from the paint itself. There are some colors and you can look at the chart on the Daniel Smith website. You can uh, watch my other videos where I talk about the Daniel Smith paints and their properties, but there are some that just granulate by nature. That's just what they do. And this is one of those paints that does that. So if you want something that looks like a shiny bathtub, then you may want to use a different blue because this will look a little, little more on the distressed side, which I love. I really did enjoy how this one came out. It's going to finish in that top panel there and pull all that color along. And a lot of this I'm just not mixing on the palette necessarily. There's a little bit of the blue and the, um, the dark green that I mixed there, but most of the rest of this is straight up color. This is what the manganese looks like. And I'm just using it in a little heavier quantity to try to even it out a little bit in a few of the spots that got more watered color. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough pigment so that it looked like it was roughly the same color across the entire bathtub. The little feet I decided to make in the color of the water. And I filled in some areas that had receded as they dried. And then it comes time for the hair. So we've got all this little tiny hair and I had my Prussian blue out for the, um, the bathtub, the bottom of the bathtub water. And I'm using a very light touch and a good mixture of heavy pigment and just a, enough water to keep it moving so that I could add some really stringy hair. Because if she's really in a bathtub and she's taking a soak, whether this bathtub is underwater or not, her little hair is probably going to get pretty curly and it's going to take away from the fact that this is a stamp because you're going to be able to see the painted lines and not focus as much on the yellow stamped lines. And that is one of the things that makes no line watercolor a lot of fun is that it looks like you painted it yourself if you can find ways to hide those lines. It's often a little easier to hide them when you're doing things like Copic marker and also depends on the color of the image and everything else. But I'm adding a little bit of a lighter green. It's a mixture of the phthalo green yellow shade and a little bit of the phthalo uh, yellow green. So a combination of those two to add just a little bit more texture in the top of her hair. And now we'll flesh out a few of the other last details, one of which is her little washcloth. And since there is some wet paint on either side of it, I'm being really careful not to touch any of that with my brush. And dabbed off that color too, because I didn't want it to sit there and leak into anything else. I'm gonna use a very light coat of the manganese blue for the area around her and just kind of keep watering it out so that I get a very soft and mushy kind of color behind it. Let it be really watercolory can dab some off with a Kleenex or a paper towel or something to get it really light, but you can see I'm just adding a ton of water to soften it out. And it really depends on how much you're comfortable with having water spots on there. Do you want to add more water spots, have less? You know, trying to make it really smooth is not my object when I'm doing watercolor because watercolor is not like Copic. Copic, you're trying to make things look a little smoother. But with watercolor, I love just letting the properties of the watercolor sing. Now here's the part with the misty that I wanted to use, which is taking some Tombow markers, water-based markers, and coloring in the details on her face. So browns for her eyebrows, black for her eyes, and then a little bit of red for her lips. And the rest of the stamp is completely clean and my image is really dry, so that when I stamp that, I can get those parts of the stamp back into the image without having to draw them in. You can draw them in with your paintbrush, but often that's a little bit challenging. So using the misty that way is one way to, to make that happen. On the finished card, I made it square and uh, let the little tail hang out over one side, added some glossy accents onto the bubbles, and popped my sentiment. So there is the last card in the series. We have survived Mermaid Week. 
And be sure to stay tuned to the blog for details on the live broadcast today. And I hope to see you there. Take care and thank you so much for your indulgence of all of my mermaids all week. If you haven't yet subscribed, please feel free to do so. There's a subscribe button right there or down below on YouTube. Take care and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.